to thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate you all being here. Thank you for all your love and support throughout this entire race. Thank you for your love and support ever since I met many of you in 2019. Some of you I knew way before that based on our work in education. Thank you for your love and support for me personally. Thank you for your love and support for my family. You've always asked me about my family. <laughs> Melissa's over there, y'all. Give Melissa a round of applause. And thank you for your love and support for this movement. This movement has never been about one person. This movement was never just about me. It was never just about New York 16. It was never just about this race in this moment. This movement has always been about justice. It has always been about humanity. It has always been about equality. And it was always, has always been about our collective liberation. Always, always, always. And it always will be. We all are here because we all believe in our responsibility and our opportunity to build a better world. That's why we are here. We know that it is incumbent upon us and it is imperative for us to work together in solidarity, in coalition, to build a multiracial, multi-background, multi-ethnic democracy that works for everyone. And we know that that multiracial, multi-ethnic democracy that works for everyone doesn't stop in New York 16. It is a national movement. It is an international movement. We will never stand for the bombing and killing of babies in Gaza. We will never stand for the killing and bombing of children in the Bronx or Mount Vernon or Yonkers. We will never stand for Western imperialism in Honduras or Guatemala, or Haiti. We will never stand for child slave labor in the Congo, or genocide in the Sudan. We are a human race that believes the end of the forever wars is possible and necessary. And while we are here at home, we will continue to fight for Medicare for all and health care as a human right. We will continue to fight for housing as a human right. We will continue to fight for criminal justice reform so people aren't in jail for nonsense. We will continue to fight to tax the rich. We know the rich need to pay their fair share. We cannot support corporate tax breaks. And we want and demand universal child care, universal pre-K, paid leave, historic investments in home care, and to continue to fight the evils of capitalism, militarism, and racism.
That is who we are. That is who we are going to continue to be. And we will not, we will not succumb to a politics and government that is rooted in fear and hate and bullying and intimidation. No, 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 no. Because fear will only continue to destroy us. Fear will only continue to destroy us. I love my Asian neighbors. I love my Latino neighbors. I love my Irish, my Italian, my Albanian, my Jewish neighbors. I love my Muslim neighbors. We love our Christian neighbors, our Buddhist neighbors. We love everyone who stands for humanity. Put your hands in the air if you stand for humanity. Put your hands in the air if you stand for justice. Put your hands in the air if you stand for equality. Now make a fist if you will continue to fight for justice, freedom, and equality. Pump your fist like this. That is what we will do. We will never stop. We mustn't ever stop. This race was never about me and me alone. It was never about this district and this district alone. It was always about all of us. Now, our opponents, not opponent, may have won this round at this time in this place. But this will be a battle for our humanity and justice for the rest of our lives. And we are going to continue to fight that battle for humanity and justice for the rest of our lives. Now, you know me and you know my background and you know what I'm about. So, you know, I always center our children. And I just want you to imagine with me for a second. What if, what if we could ensure every child on this planet had access to clean water? And every child on this planet had access to health care. And every child on this planet felt safe. And every child on this planet had a quality education. Imagine the kind of world and human race we could create. That, to me, is our ultimate calling. Making sure we are doing everything in our power to take care of our children so that one in five don't go to bed hungry in the richest country in the world. And so I want to make an apology, public apology, for, you know, sometimes using foul language. I'm sorry. But, but I think it is not, how do I want to say this? We should not be well adjusted to a sick society. We should be outraged. We should be outraged when a super PAC of dark money can spend $20 million to brainwash people into believing something that isn't true. We should be outraged about that. We should be outraged when, unfortunately, some so-called Democrats are aligning themselves with radical, racist, right-wing Republicans. We should be outraged about that. And that is why we have so much work still to do. And so, 
I thank everyone for coming out. Please scream to the top of your lungs for all of the volunteers of the Bowman for Congress campaign, yo. Yeah! Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for every call, for every door knock, for every text message, for every sign of love and compassion that you shared with everybody else. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I also need to shout out the whole Bowman for Congress staff. Shout out, I'm going to forget somebody, but Lawrence, where's Lawrence at? Is Lawrence over there on comms? Shout out to Elona on field. Where's Elona? I don't know where Elona is. I can't find Elona. Shout out to Gabe, the campaign manager. Where's Gabe? Shout out to Jeff and Usama and the Justice Democrats. <laughs> Shout out to Jasmine and Anna Maria and the Working Families Party. Shout out to Taika who did the fundraising. We're going to come back to that in a minute. I'm sorry if I forgot you. So I'm coming off the top of my head. But I just want to thank you all so much. And I want to go back to Taika for a second. Hold on. Before I go back to Taika. Actually, yeah, let me start with Taika. So... Even though APAC and their affiliates, don't boo. I know we want to boo them. Don't boo. Boo! <laughs> Even though they spent a record amount of money, the most in U.S. history, to beat this black man... We also had some damn good fundraising ourselves. We raised over $5 million for this campaign. Mostly small dollar contributions. And Taika was a major part of that. Make some noise for Taika, y'all. Five million dollar campaign. Hey, Taika, if you and I working together can raise five million in six months, you know Jamal Bowman ain't going nowhere, right? Because if we can raise five million in six months, what could we do in about a year and a year and a half? There's a lot of other seats to run for, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of other seats. I'm still a damn good candidate. <laughs> we, we, could, we could do some things. I'm just saying. So, I'm speaking way longer than I expected, but I want to say a couple more things. Number one, it's coming. Why are you messing up? Why are you messing up? Damn. 
damn, I'm in the zone up here. Before I get to that, I want us to acknowledge publicly together the power of the Muslim community. Y'all could do better than that. You don't understand what the Muslim community specifically did in this race. The Muslim community, from Yonkers to San Francisco to Dearborn, Michigan, to St. Louis, to Chicago, to Long Island, to New Jersey, surrounded me this entire race with protection, with love, with gratitude, and they helped us raise more money than we ever raised before. And they surrounded me with prayer this entire race. So please make some noise to help me thank the Muslim community specifically. And by extension, we will continue to fight for a free Palestine now. us build a better world where everyone understands when we say free Palestine it is not anti-semitic please damn we need to stop this behavior and thinking and fear based that will lead us to self-destruction let me close with this since we got into office, we have been in tremendous battles and fights around a variety of policies and issues and advocacy and challenges. And when you, you're welcome. <laughs> and when you are in these battles, you need to have the right people next to you and around you, around you and surrounding you. You all have been there for me and I thank you. Melissa has been there for me as my wife, and I thank her. <laughs> but there is no person. And when your uh, 70 year old trying to act like a 40 year old <laughs> at those train stations, there are moments when you're alone, and there are moments when you question your judgment, and there are moments when you wonder how you're going to go on, when you get attacked, or you see something written that is untrue and unkind. But I always thought that the people in this room were with me, every single step of the way. And that, even when I was alone, let me know that I wasn't alone. And that what we see tonight is, in fact, the men. This is the men in Westchester and the Bronx. <laughs> Yes, sir. 
of the extended delegation, we have tried to govern inclusively, to consider the needs of everybody in this district, every zip code. We see in this group the men and women of labor. And they represent the secretaries, the case workers, the bus drivers, and the mechanics, the plumbers, and the carpenters, the electricians, and the firefighters, the people who, like my mom and dad, work with their hands to try to have a better life for their children. They're included in this grand combination. And what we've done in Westchester with the team leadership, Ken Jenkins, by my side at all times, and is in his own right a dynamic leader prepared to lead. When we have leaders in quality of Mike Spano and Tom Roach and so many others. When we have people of all backgrounds who are willing to give up their time, their energy, without any particular benefit, because they believe that the kind of government they want to have in their town, in their city, in their village, and in their county is inclusive and it gets things done. Results! <laughs> this is the template that we need on a world level. I go to Washington, D.C. I wouldn't know that. I'll lead you again. We go to Washington. We're one of 435. But we're not the only one. There are good men and women in Washington who feel the same way we do. And we have to find each other and live with each other. We have to look at the arguments of the far right and the far left and say, you cannot destroy this country with your rhetoric and your arguments. <laughs> we have to have unity all across that continuum. And if you hold a strong belief, you still must work with other people who don't share that belief because America hangs the balance. But this form of government 
is the best hope that we have for the greatest number of people to have the greatest possible future. We have to fight to make sure that we do not vilify each other, that we remember that we're all Americans, and that our common future is bound to win. And if we think that way, that the problems that we see, the serious problems, climate change is a serious problem, we have issues to deal with immigration, serious issues, but we're bound together by a common future. So we work on those problems together. We argue, we debate, we find a way to come together. This country cannot afford to split into little pieces, and every single representative has to understand the necessity for unity so that we can move forward as a nation.